Okay, doing one today, Mako 300. Customers, not mine. I don't have any uh, more Mako 300s. I had a couple, sold them all. Um, this one was kind of in, I, I would say, rough to fair shape. Um, but uh, I got talked into a, doing another one for a customer. Um, so anyway, we took it on. We got it. You can see, you know, it's got scratches and stuff. But the Mako 300 is kind of a beast. Um, it's probably the best or most dependable amplifier uh, Mako made. Um, basic grounded grid, you know, nothing, no special circuitry, no turbo charge really. But it's two driving five. Um, it's interesting that, you know, Mako calls this one the, uh, 300, and I think the, uh, 750 has, uh, is it two driving six or three driving six? Just, you know, one or two more tubes, and you jump from a, uh, 300 to a 750. But the 750 does have two transformers, where this one only has one, and one of the things I found out about this one is, um, that one transformer is having a, a little bit of a hard time keeping up with the uh, seven tubes it's driving. You know, the two driving five plus the filaments, you know, all on um, one transformer. Um, one thing I wanted to show, if you see this uh, weird thing for the meter there, that's kind of factory. Um, I had something else, a uh, schematic that had a gimmick in it, and people were like, what is a gimmick? And I said, a gimmick is kind of hard to explain, but it's like a circuitry that uh, reads power or, or uh, does something like inductance capacitance, but it doesn't actually touch. And if you see this meter, that one wire uh, goes to nothing. It's just, you know, kind of hanging there, right? Um, but that's a gimmick. And over here... If you see the meter, um, you see that uh, line coming there. It's kind of close to the coil. It's not actually touching anything or anything. Um, and that's a gimmick in the schematic, right? Um, it's, a again, a circuit that doesn't physically, you know, it's not physically connected to the other circuit. But it's still active or a part of the circuit or is sniffing or reading or doing something. Whether uh, capacitive or, you know, induction and all that even without being physically connected so uh, that's a gimmick in the schematic you know the meter right there and that's the uh, gimmick in physical life right there that little green wire uh, just kind of hanging it's still close enough to the um, output or the RF so it still senses enough when you key down and it senses enough RF and it's still enough to um, activate the meter so um, that's a gimmick and that's the two driving five this one ain't pretty I know a little rough some of the soldering joints ain't the greatest and all that we actually touched it up a lot and got it going but um, we're gonna um, put the camera down and turn this guy on his side and show her underneath. Ugh. Tram doctor's getting old. And that's what it looks like underneath. This one had a lot of problems with it. Uh, a lot of bad solder joints. It was actually missing a couple parts. Um, and... <clears throat> That was the keying circuit that was originally in it. Um, if you can zoom up and see that soldering there, that's what this amp looked like when I got it. Most of the soldering looked like that. Um, and even though it's not the greatest soldering now, um, it's a lot harder to redo stuff like this than it is to um, you know start from scratch or have something a little bit better to work on but anyway we redid a lot of these joints cleaned it up uh, re ran some wires that look um, pretty bad uh, and it's not too bad now not great but you know you, you you get what you get you work with what you work with right um, but we looked at this uh, key in circuit 
And we were like, yeah, forget that. I don't feel like messing with that. So what I did is um, I bought a few of these Nomad Ken circuits. That's that little board right there. And that resistor is original from Nomad. Um, for the little bitty Nomad Ken circuit, it's a lot heavier duty. It uses a much bigger Ken transistor that will handle a lot more um, power or amps, even though, you know, it's just Ken to relay. But it's, a, you know, I'd say... 10 times more dependable than even this if it even looked better that's the uh, keying transistor for you know this one it's just a little small I think 2N 3904 or 3906 uh, that's a little small one this one um, it's actually underneath so you can't see it and um, the collector is actually bolted to the um, to the frame, you know, for cooling. So it's a lot better design, a lot more compact, and again, about ten times more dependable. You know, it's a basic grounded grid amp. That's the um, input tuner, and then that's the driver tuner, and then that's the uh, uh, tune and load for the output. Full way bridge power supply, power supply capacitors. Um, Originally, this calls for a um, surge resistor in the schematics, and that wasn't in there. Um, in the schematics, that's that uh, two ohm resistor right there on top of the diodes, and um, that wasn't in there. So, without that in there, when you turned it on, you could hear the transformer straining, and you know, while it's trying to charge up the capacitors, there you can hear it grunting and groaning, and um, once you put that surge resistor in there that was supposed to be in there, it, it um, turns on a lot smoother. No uh, uh, grunting and groaning from the transformer. And, um, you know, even though this isn't the best now, um, you should have seen it before I started. You would understand. So anyway, it was, took quite a bit of work to get this one going. Another thing it had was um, the relay had a bad pole, so we had to redo the relay and it was missing a few other parts so it was it was quite a little project um, but anyway we gonna turn around right quick carefully and hopefully we haven't um, done anything to um, uh, unresonate it or untune it we're still on our little mud duck uh, radio over there doing about three watts you know ended it swinging about maybe six average maybe about 810 peak um, this amp would do a lot more if you know we put more watts in it but for these demonstration purposes and this to show us working we just like running our little mud duck radio and let it uh let it run low um, it's got high low where it um, it's got a second tap on the uh, high voltage out the transformer um, high tap and a low tap and that switches between that a standby switch um, I think this one originally came with a preamp and the preamp and the key and circuit were originally on the board on a circuit board but somebody I think um, took that all out and you know that's why they formatted that uh, key and circuit there and it doesn't have a preamp in it now it's just a straight uh, regular amp not bi amplified and uh, AMSSB with the delay um, that wasn't right either but that's probably because of um, um, that but all that's you know straightened out so anyway we ought to be warmed up enough and uh, we go fire up the um, Mako 300 let's go to 2000 watt scale. I forgot which meter. I think I'm on that meter anyway. 2000 watt scale, 3 watts going in, so we're not going to get a ton of watts going out. Um, and the tubes are just fair too. Um, they were all over the place. You know, some are at 50, 60, you know, up to 90. So, mismatch tubes all over the place. Uh, low watts going in so it's not going to do a terrible amount of, of watts out so anyway 2000 watt scale dead keen about 200 audio 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 talking to about 250 
magician to over three. Whistling to about 340 on average. And then last on peak. Audio, audio, audio. Audio. Doing about 425 peak. Hello, 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 hello. Audio. And see how the meter's working, even with that gimmick of not touching and uh, on light, mod light. Hello, hello. Hard to see it in the, all the lights I got on. But everything's working. Um, works pretty good. This one, because, you know, all this went through and the solder and all that, eh, you know, I like it, but I don't love it. Um, just because of the shape it's in, even cleaned up and re-soldered. Um, but, hey, you, you know, you get what you get. And, you know, still a good amp. I'd say one of the best little amps made, you know, the little Mako 300, even though this one's a little bit in the, toward the rough shape, but, you know, not terrible. But I think it'll last, you know, I think I can key down, you know, what I'm doing now. Audio, 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 that's still on peak, but, you know, I can key it down for a long time. It does run a little bit hot, so I wouldn't go too crazy, right? Um, but that thing ain't going nowhere. Audio, 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 little workhorse, Mako 300, just don't hit them hard like most people do and try to get a thousand watts out of it and all that, you can do it, but you can't do it for long, there's, you know, the tubes, the components, you know, that transformer, uh, all that, you know, you try to get a lot more watts out of it, yeah, you'll do it, but you won't be doing it for long, it'll be back to the shop and, um, and basically I don't work on amps anymore you know I do one in a few a year you know mostly out of favors or you know because I'm bored I'll take on a few projects but nope don't send them to me anyway that's gonna be it on this little uh, Mako 300 bye